A couple of years ago, I made a review of the Brooks Cambium C17 after I had about four months of experience with it. And if you want to see how bad my videos were a year and a half ago, just for funsies, do look out for the card at the end of this video. Now that I've gotten to know the saddle a little bit better, and after two years of having it grace my underside, let's take a look at how the Brooks Cambium C17 saddle has held up over the past two years of regular commuting and distance rides. As with any self-respecting review that we do here, we're going to take a look at what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and see if it's worth your hard-earned clams. First, the pros. It's a Brooks saddle, and Brooks is notorious for having the most comfortable saddles that money can buy. The Cambium line is unique in that they're made of a rubber base covered with a cotton lining, whereas most other saddles are either made out of a plastic or carbon base, if you fancy, with varying degrees of padding. So why does a rubber saddle matter? The wizards at Brooks figured out a way to make a rubber saddle that conforms to your booty right out of the box because of the flexible nature. There's no breaking the saddle in, no maintenance, just enjoy your ride. I regularly commute on the Cambium and do distance rides between 40 to 80 miles, in jeans no less, and the Cambium is just as comfortable as the day that I got it. There's no saddle soreness after long rides, but it feels like the Cambium gently supports your tender nethers and your behind, and we could all use some gentle support sometime. I know it seems rough right now, but I, I can tell that you're doing your best. You're doing great, kiddo. Keep it up. A lot of other saddles feel like that I'm fighting the saddle after a lot of miles, and I just can't get comfortable on it, and I have to constantly readjust to prevent soreness. But having to readjust and being uncomfortable while on my ride just does not cross my mind when I'm riding on the C17 Cambium. You put it on your bike, you ride your bike as far as your legs can take you, boom, how does it do it? So comfort is obviously a huge plus about the Cambium, but another thing is that it's maintenance free. No proofied, no disintegrating in water. You just ride the thing. Another thing about the saddle that I've been pretty pleased with is the durability. Although not indestructible, my Cambium has been pretty dang durable over the past two years of regular use. I put about 4,000 miles on it, give or take, that's like a pretty rough estimate. <laughs> and all the rivets are where they should be. I've dyed it in scalding hot black water. I've left it out in multiple storms. I've left it out in the sun, which subsequently bleached it white, which then my jeans stained blue. My Cambium has been through a lot and it's still going pretty strong, so I'm pretty pleased about that. The Cambium has held up really well for what I put it through, but again, it's not indestructible. With that, let's move on to my complaints with the saddle. So the durability has been pretty good, but it can be better. With that said, with how much use I've gotten out of the saddle, I'd still be a pretty happy buyer if the saddle just disintegrated as we speak. But I'm not really sure how many more years I can get out of my Cambium. The saddle has some minor cosmetic issues on the back plate with surface corrosion, which is to be expected after sitting through multiple storms. And there's some chipping on the logo, which is kind of a bummer. Along with that, the dye will fade with time. Well, at least mine did. The nose of the saddle developed a line where the cotton wore away, exposing the bare rubber. Worse, the rubber cracked on the nose rivet, fraying the cotton, which might develop into something worse, but only time will tell. Apparently, the durability on the nose is a common issue. I talked to a mechanic, and he said that a lot of his customers that ride a Cambium have issues with the nose. And in some instances, the nose rivet has completely popped off. But fortunately, he said that Brooks has been pretty good about replacing or repairing these saddles that have issues. Another pretty minor complaint that I have about the saddle, it can be fixed easily, but it squeaks where the rubber meets the rails. You could fix it just by putting some tape over where the rubber meets the rails, but it's kind of annoying. And the last drawback of the saddle is that if you care about weight, the saddle probably isn't for you, weighing in at 418 grams. But if you're sick of searching for a saddle that plays nice with your bum, the C17 Cambium is a pretty safe bet. Now, I've never ridden a leather brook saddle, but some people that do say that they are more comfortable than the Cambium line of saddles. But judging by how comfortable the Cambiums are, I have a pretty hard time believing that a saddle can be much more comfortable and if it's worth the hassle of having to maintain it. It's no-nonsense, top-tier comfort right out of the box, all the while being maintenance-free, 
and reasonably durable. At around $100 for a used Cambium, I would absolutely say that it is worth the money, especially if you regularly ride over 40 miles. If you're sick of saddle shopping and you're looking for that one saddle that will be your most comfortable saddle once and for all, do check out the affiliate links below to Amazon and to eBay if you're looking to buy a used Cambium. And if you want to see how far I've come in my video making, please do click that card above to see my first review of the Brooks Cambium. Also, do any of you ride a Cambium out there or a leather Brooks or other leather saddle for that matter? If so, please do comment below and say how much you like it, what you like about it, what you don't like it, all that good jazz and such. And if you want to stay updated on the channel and know when uploads are going to be posted, please do give me a follow on Instagram and Twitter. And if you want to like check out my rides to the beach or something, I'm on Strava. If you're new to the channel and you like fixed gear bikes, what a coincidence, I do too. Do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button so you can have fixed gear videos sent straight to your subacts twice a week. And with that, I will see you all in the next video.